Here we have another attempt at the rail rider wheels. I've tried to uh, cut down Volkswagen rims and they just didn't work out very good. They were too noisy and I never did get them centered and, and uh, trued up very well. So it was pretty hard to stay on the cart. They were so dang noisy. Well then I tried these wheels, just the wheel, um, with idlers. I made idlers out of, or guide wheels, out of some skateboard wheels to run up against the rail. But I was surprised about the amount of pressure that is on these wheels to keep them on the rail. So that too was a failure. And now I've built these rims. These are 20 inch garden cart tires, wheel and rim, spoked. And I cut down 55 gallon barrel lids, drums, to uh, put on there uh, to use as a, a rim. It's made for the inside dimension of the rail. Actually I have them at 56 inches uh, inside the inside dimension. Um, here's my little engine, a six and a half horse Briggs engine. It's off an old pressure washer. And the running gear that we have under here is actually uh, running gear out of an old riding lawnmower. And I extended the axle, as you can see, over to this rim. So I had to build new stub axles after I switched from the Volkswagen rim to this setup uh, to get them centered back into the right line again. Um, there we go, kind of another straight on shot of those wheels there. So we're real eager to get it out. It's going to be a couple of days till we get back on the rail again. I can hardly wait to go. We have a beautiful place to go here. Um, it's abandoned track. There's probably close to 60 miles of track anyway to go on there. Well, I'll show you another deal I have here on this rail rider that's unique. It's this lever right here. And that is our steering lever. So it'll uh, turn these front tires one way and the other. Yeah, <laughs> why would a rail rider need steering? Well, if I want to power over from a parking lot or from a... Or you come to those crossings that are all graveled in and you need to get across them and you don't quite line up on the rail on the other side, you can steer it a little bit and get her um, back on the on the rail after you've made the crossing. This was the axle, the front axle off the old garden tractor that we had. Actually it was a riding lawnmower not a garden tractor. I keep saying garden tractor. But anyway I extended it out. I cut it and welded uh, on both sides there. Extended it out and used the spindles. The same spindles and all of that. The same steering gear. I went ahead and, and uh, extended the tie rod between them. Don't look like they're quite lined up. I might have to do an alignment job on it, huh? Looks like it from here anyway. So, I have a pin for when we're on the rail. We discovered that this helps. We have a, a pin here, and it goes right down into the steering gear and locks it to the axle. And we did find that that made a difference, that the uh, front end wouldn't wander so much on the rail. Um, it's amazing how much it, it did want to try to travel off the track. Of course, the tracks are old and rounded. And they're not flat on top, so that tire is always trying to wind its way or wander its way off of the track. So, at any rate, well, here, let me go to the back of the machine again. I'll show you what these levers are between the seats there. This lever that we have here... This is simply a forward and reverse. It's the same speed both directions. And uh, here we have the brake lever. And it comes on and stays on. So it's like a parking brake lever. It works quite well. And then this is the clutch. And what we have for the clutch is actually um, an idler. A belt tensioner idler. And um, it, it works great. It works great. And then under the top here, I wonder if I can just lift it up without taking that bolt out. 
Under the top is a variable speed pulley where one size gets uh, larger diameter as the other one gets smaller diameter and uh, it's it's also out of the riding lawnmower. Works good. Works real good. You can put around in low gear but then you get on the rail and you kick it up into high gear. So far I have only an estimate. It is kind of a slow machine. We're going to speed it up with the Volkswagen rims that we had on it. It was running, I estimate, about 15 miles an hour. And uh, those were 15 and a half inch inside diameter. And now we've gained by five inches almost, close to five inches. Well, technically closer to four. These 20 inch tires are actually 19 and a half inch diameter. So we'll get a little more speed out of it. And my next uh, improvement is gonna be to have a uh, smaller pulley on the transaxle. Right now it's running a eight inch pulley and I'm gonna drop it down to a six inch if we can't get enough uh, speed out of it on these on these wheels. So it should be a lot nicer to ride. They're centered a lot better and they, uh, and they have rubber so it should be a lot quieter too. Those old Volkswagen rims were like sitting between four bells in a cathedral somewhere. We have office chairs, two office chairs we got from the dump, and actually three. We got that one from the dump as well. And then the space this side of the small office chair is where the cooler straps down so one more person could ride on it. It's about a four passenger outfit. If you had a little kid or a couple little kids, you could maybe squeeze them on there too. Uh, it's an eight foot wheelbase on it and of course four foot eight and a half inches wide for the rims um, let's see what else I don't know what else to tell you about on this old girl for a while it's all made out of scrap except for the tires that I bought and the brackets those u-bolts around the tires everything else is all out of scrap the deck is old uh, semi doors off semi truck of course mentioned the chairs from the dump pressure washer engine came from the dump. Um, I advertised in classifieds and got a used riding lawnmower that didn't run. In fact, it didn't even have an engine in it, but we didn't care. We just wanted those parts. Um, here's the lever that controls the variable speed for the those two pulleys back there that I showed you earlier. So, anyway, well, that's about a good tour as I can get you with on this outfit. We're very, very eager to get it back on the rails. We have a lot of rail. We have one rail that goes right over the Continental Divide. It's beautiful. It's called Homestake Pass. We can't wait to get on that. It's probably 30 or 40 miles of rail. Um, unless the there's a bunch of trestles on it and I heard that they had gates across those trestles. I'm hoping that those gates have been knocked down by now and we can just keep right on trucking. So this is a great place to live. Here's a view of my backyard. I hunt, so I shoot a lot of elk off that mountain up there. And um, <laughs> my junk pile, I've got a lot of junk laying around here. And this is, uh, this is our newest dog, <laughs> Josiah. And she just loves that ball. All right, folks, have a great day. Have a nice evening if it's in the evening when you're watching this. Stay blessed. Keep your uh, keep your guns loaded and your powder dry. Talk to you later. Out.